guys, what's up? I know it's not Friday, it's Saturday, but I was asked to do a lot to discuss everything. Van life, living in the SUV, being a travel nurse, relationships, traveling with a partner, uh, children, just you know, keeping connections with family, and uh, questions. We will be taking live questions, myself and some special guests. Um, what did you DG? I'll be there. I'll uh, be invited. Uh, a lot of other people. I'm not going to drop their names just in case they're not able to make it. Brace Nomad, that's B R A S E Nomad. And what it do, DG? What it do, DG? What it do? H Town all the way down. Oh, oh now we repping cities. Okay. Okay. Oh, Y'all yeah, know I'm Philadelphia's finest. Yeah, I was this year. Philadelphia's finest. Yeah, we about to do this thing. We about to make this thing, thing, thing. So we're going to start off basically what is new and what is going on until our guests get here. Um, so let's start with uh, DG. DG is in California now, but she recently just left Arizona at an event called the RTR, uh, which stands for the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. And what this is, is a group of nomads gather in the desert of Arizona for about a week and do seminars about how to live off grid uh, uh, and different rigs, how you can live off grid, different resources and everything that you have. <laughs> yeah, Yanni, you tried it. Uh, and have seminars and different uh, stuff like that and just come together as a nomad community because nomad, uh, to be a nomad basically means not to have uh, a, a stationary home or be stationary. It's literally Rome. So it's one time a year where people stop roaming and come together for a week to collaborate. Now, this event uh, is notoriously known within the uh, POC community of nomads as not um, very diverse. So we're, I've been there before. I have never given my opinion, but I'm going to use this opportunity to let Danette, who is, we celebrated 60 days, nomad life, man life. Where are you at now? Girl, you hold up, days? hold up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You said 60 days. I am at over 100 now. Congratulations, 100 days in the nomad van life journey. So you are still very much a novice. But you have this experience under your belt going to the RTR. So what exactly did you, what was your takeaway? So um, there's a lot of good information um, that you can get. And they do have a virtual RTR. So like if you're looking for that information, um, you can go on their website, which is HOWA, um, H-O-W-A and get the same information. Um, I went there more for the experience and actually being there amongst other nomads um, because I am pretty new. I started my part-time journey pretty much by myself and with one other person. So this is like really a great opportunity right now for me to build my community, to find my tribe, to find the people that you know I wanna keep around me. So that's why I went uh, feeling like I that was what I was gonna do. However, mm -hmm. When I got there, it was um, kind of a culture shock for me, to be honest. Um, I am from Houston, H-Town all the way down. Um, and so I'm used to a lot of diversity, a lot of diversity. I mean, everywhere you look, it's, it's some, something other than what you are. You know what I'm saying? But you also have your own people. When I got there, I did not get that. Um... I couldn't. I, I had a hard time finding my people, and when I did, I, I latched on very tightly. I did. Um, but I did find a couple of good friends there. Um, we still communicate and all that good stuff. Um, I got a lot of good information. The van tours was probably the part for me that I enjoyed the most at the end of the RTR. The last two days are is like an open house. So you can open up your vehicle, your vehicle dwelling. And um, share your basically share your crib with everybody. It's uh -huh. a big MTV Cribs party. 
Um, that was the best <laughs> in the desert. Okay. I'm sure so that was the best experience. part for me, honestly. But it okay. was a good experience. It's good to have the experience. I know that it probably won't be for me next year. The open house, if I do anything, will probably be all that I visit and then move on. Okay. Okay. That, that's what's up. So there you have it. That was her experience. So I went to the RTR about four years ago. This is when I was still traveling in my school bus. Uh, and it was very Wahiti. It was very Wahiti. I didn't, I was unable to find a tribe. Um, it was very unwelcoming. So I went back home and I never returned. So, and that was my story. There's a lot of other uh, black nomads um, who also have had the same experience and has spoken on it. I'm not gonna tell their story. I'm allowed them to tell their own story. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was that. Oh, moving right on along. We're gonna just keep moving it right on. Along. Keep plugging through. Move, move, move right out of my life. Move. <laughs> Listen. So the last time we did, we just going. We are gonna just jump into the. We gonna jump into the relationship uh, part of this discussion. Because the last time me and you was live with um, Ray and Frankie and all of them, you had started a new journey and um, had jumped out of one situation and was it was just just roaming the world, being free, living her best life. How, how is that going? Um, it's going pretty fantastic. Um, I. Like I said, I jumped out of a situation um, that I needed to have jumped out of for years um, and just kind of happened to meet somebody else. We're still very good friends at this point, but um, nothing serious on the horizon. Still living single and free. We are living single. So I have a question, though, um, because I don't really have enough a lot romantically going on in my life like i said I, I have a friend back home does not travel he's stationary so when i get there meet him up for some tacos and some coronas but um how is it for you being a nomad and being in a relationship or are you in a relationship which is that uh, i believe I am very much single, very much single until I am married. So and then until I am married, I am very much single. But um, however, being a nomad, it's very difficult to maintain a relationship. And being a travel nurse, it's very difficult to maintain a relationship. Because not only do I travel for leisure, I also look travel for work. So oftentimes, uh, when you're in a relationship, the person feels as though they can understand the travel for work because, you know, this is your livelihood. This is how you make a living. But they can't understand the travel for leisure. So uh, that's where the difficulty comes because um, people think on your off time that you use now your biggest concern would be your spouse. But... Uh, being a nomad and traveling and being young, free, how about young, dumb, and free, young, I don't know. But just being young, free, full of energy, and having the ability to go meet people and do things, that's still very much in the top priority. So, um, yeah, if I can't I have it all, which I believe I should be able to have it all, I don't want nothing. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. If I can't have it all. I want none of it. So, like I said, until I'm married, my status will be single. Uh, and um, ready to mingle. I'm free. Single and I am free. free. Yes. So, and I will be a uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. 
I will be hitting the road again. I will be back on the road heading west. I will be heading west, heading west, heading west, heading west. I will How be far west, west are you coming? See, there you go in my business. There you go in my business, DG. There you go in my business. Y'all don't know, boy, listen. I keep trying to get Yvonne to join. Yanni, because Yanni is in the comment talking, but she, she will not join. And I'm very saddened by that because she is um, one of my closest family members. We are first cousins, and, but she's more like a sister to me and sometimes even a mother. And I really would like to y'all get to meet her because she has a bigger personality than me. Y'all think my personality is big. We both can't be in the same because there will not be enough space for any other personalities. If you have any questions, let me know. We'll make sure we get yeah. up here. Yeah, and who got some questions? Who got questions? Are there any questions Anybody on IG questions? yet? I'm watching no the... Questions uh, on IG. Okay, question from Grace on uh, YouTube. Okay, question from YouTube. How what has the, finding work been during COVID as a nurse? To be honest with you, during COVID, I have been working more than I want to work. I have been on the road working since September 2019 constantly, uh, and I never do that. I usually work about six months, take two to three months off, and then work another six months. But since September 2019, because of COVID, I've been working constantly. Now, there has been a wave, but there has never been a drought. Even right now, there uh, isn't a drought. It's just uh, the COVID numbers are high in places that I don't wish to work, i.e. places that are cold. I don't work in the cold. I don't like the cold. That's one reason why I left the Philadelphia region is because I don't like the cold. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so right now, uh, I am based out of Florida, where it's a nice 70 degrees, um, and I like that. So if I can uh, stay in Florida, which they do have a lot of COVID in southern Florida, I'm on the panhandle, um, then I will be heading west. There's still a lot of cases in uh, California, Arizona, um, which are places that are on my list of, yeah places I would go during the winter months. Um, the numbers are high in New York, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wyoming, Massachusetts. But these are all cold places, places where I desire not to travel. And um, the work conditions in some hospitals in some states with the COVID is not where they should be. So I try to uh, make sure I go to states and cities that are more progressive uh, and have financial means so that uh, my work conditions um, won't be hard. Yeah, but um, I've definitely had PTSD. When this whole pandemic is over, I will definitely have PTSD because it has been a journey. It's been a journey. Fantastic. Um, oh, we got another question. Uh, we're listening. All right. So, question for the host: um, Are you full time in van life, and are you considering transitioning to a van from your SUV? Uh, yes, I am full time. I went full time about three months ago. Um, as you can see in my SUV, I am very, very much considering moving up to a van. Um, right now, I'm kind of looking at my options. As to what I want, um, I'm trying to really decide between a uh, Ford Transit or something similar to that, um, or a low roof van, and then put a pop top on it. Um, whatever I get after this point, I will be in for a long while. So it's gonna, it's pro it'll probably be a few months, if not another year, before I actually make the move because I want to make sure whatever I get then I can take my time and build it out and um, do it the way that I really want it because that'll probably be the uh, my home on wheels that I take to the limit so 
yeah, I um, plan on being in that for a long, long while. So, Brace, what do you travel in? Oh, oh, I actually, uh, currently, I am traveling in my 2021 Chevy Traverse. Uh, it's the SUV. Uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with the Traverse, uh, but it's about one cubic feet smaller, foot smaller than the Tahoe. It's very roomy, very uh, spacious. Uh, you can watch some of my YouTube videos. I'm sorry, I'm, um, y'all see I can't multitask. I'm responding to some people text who are trying to get on. Uh, it's very roomy. But yeah, I show it a lot on my YouTube channel. So if you guys, uh, want to see my setup, you can go there. I started off in a short school bus, a five window, uh, school bus to give you some concept. Uh, and that it just proved to be too big for my lifestyle, my travel methods, and I had to pull a car. So I actually downsized to the 2021 Chevy Traverse, uh, and I actually, I love it. And I'm able to um, switch between uh, it being uh, a camper and my primary vehicle. I'm actually trying to help one or uh or um, my friends, uh, the young lady, as I speak about my previous vehicle, the school bus, uh, uh, Natasha, I'm trying to get Natasha on because Natasha actually has the school bus. She has painted the school bus, revamped the school bus, did all these things. And I'm trying to help Tasha get on because I think this will be a perfect time for her to get on and, um, discuss what she has you know done and her plans for the school bus i'm not even sure if she has moved into the full uh the school bus full time or not but uh yeah so i see miss palmer uh has definitely uh joined us hey danielle welcome to the line all right so danielle, we have another then... question oh my god hold on well, hold on that question one minute. Danielle is in my favorite uh, state to uh, travel to, which is in Colorado. So if Danielle would like to jump on this live and tell us her first experience in Colorado, I would love it because that's one of the states that POC, people of color, for those who don't know that term, uh, shy away from Colorado. But I love Colorado. What's the question, babe? All right. So the question is, how are you supporting yourself on the road? And thanks for your response. So I, um, I currently am building my VA business, which is virtual assistant business. And you can find me on um, sistercollab.com for that. And I'm also, um, but in the meantime, while I build that in order for it to sustain me and I can be completely digital, um, I actually do DoorDash wherever I am. Um, and that makes sure that I keep cash in my pocket and also, you know, pay some of my bills and all that good stuff. So, you know, I still, I can still keep on moving, keep gas in the car and all that good stuff. As you already know, you guys know for me, I am a, a full-time travel nurse and that's how I make my money. But however, I'm about to go to a new journey. I'm about to go on a new journey. This will be a great time to pause for the calls. Thank you guys for going for the ride. But if you have not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'm about to go on a new journey. And in this new journey, I'm not going to be working full time. So I waited until I had full time responsibilities like a home, uh, a, car, a brand new car and all these things to change my whole lifestyle and go from working full time to going to just working as needed. So as of this Friday, the 11th, I will no longer be full-time employed. I will no longer be working full-time. I will be a full-time nomad uh, working as needed and uh, more concentrating on self-gratification. And when I say self-gratification, I mean it in all parts of my life. I have really gotten to a point where 
I have achieved um, everything that I had sought out to achieve as far as um, having my home, as far as my education. I was able uh, to, you know, obtain my uh, master's degree. I was uh, able to get into management and do all of those things. So now that I have, you know, you know, raised my children, my grandchildren now, uh, I, I have a, a nice nest egg. I feel like I should be, allow myself the opportunity to work freely on my own terms, travel and do, you know, all of those things and not work full time. So uh, my goal at this point is from now, well, from Friday the 11th until New Year's of 2023 to not work full time. So that's my goal. So I'm going to keep y'all posted and let y'all know how that works. I'm going to let y'all know how that works. Any other questions? Currently, we are all caught up over here on YouTube. Oh, you know what? Let's see if Queen Tasha wants to get on and talk about this retreat. So uh, I'm sure you guys, if you, any of you guys are actually uh, followers, you know that uh, myself and Zanette has teamed up with Queen Tasha to do a retreat in Cancun, Mexico. It starts, what day does it start? April or April 1st? Yes, April 1st to April 6th. Yeah, April 1st to April 6th. We have teamed up with uh, Queen Tasha to do this um, Queen's retreat. And I'm going to see if I can get Queen Tasha on here just to give a little more information about the retreat. And um, there is still space available. And if you do need more information, you can always contact myself, Grace Nomad, uh, What Did You DG, or Queen Tasha just to get more uh, information concerning uh, this retreat. Uh, you know, we don't stay for a long time, but we always there for a good time. So know that we will have a great time. Is that the um? Is that the link that you just sent me? Because some, somebody's asking for this link. The net. Yeah. That was the link you just sent. I haven't sent any links. Okay, maybe uh, listen, y'all. I'm living in the yes, country. My dear. <gasps> oh my gosh, she's in the bus. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Mom, oh too. my god, it looks amazing. I'm working on the wood. Oh my god, gosh. Reception is bad. Okay, now what you say? Say it again. What are you working on? Uh, I didn't hear you. The, the uh, connection's pretty bad, so I'm working on a velvet ceiling to help me stay insulated, and uh, I did uh, the fake wood, or uh, actually wood panel, like, what is it, tongue and groove? Yeah, yeah. That is nice! Look at my baby! Oh, my baby! Look at my baby! Uh, I wish I could show you the outside with this signal, but it's, it's a bit sketch over in this spot. It's like cutting in and out so are you living in the um the uh bus full time now i am <gasps> it's it's been a challenge i i was not expecting that that storm to be so intense Just got hit by a storm. Hey, Derek. Oh, yeah, it was a uh, negative uh, six or something. How did your fur babies do? Oh, he survived. was. We're talking to you. How'd the fur babies do? Well, Chewbacca was good, but uh, Cordia 
she uh she had a kidney failure uh right before thanksgiving yeah yeah i uh i remember you posting about that and uh coria has been with us from the from the beginning and even through all the sickness and everything true trooper like true trooper a hiking pile was was doing better than me and you and was the littlest thing out there so um uh, i'm happy that in a better place now no more suffering no more you know any of those things so and she trained Chewbacca. She trained Chewbacca to take over her place. And it's like the atmosphere knows what we need when we need it. And the atmosphere must have knew you needed a stronger, sturdier uh, dog for this new journey. Oh, and yeah. a protector for this new journey. Oh. That's what they gave you. You went from a damsel to a whole uh, a whole beast up in there. Because Chewbacca is a beast. That's, that's a, a lot of babies. I've had the opportunity to sleep with him. He's a lot of baby. Oh yeah, now he's so about he's 85 like... pounds. <gasps> oh my gosh. Mm. So is he adjusting to the bus life well? Oh yeah, because he has the, the bed to, to lay on. He crawls out and he has a lot of fun and he bounces around and um he was chewing on some things though not gonna lie so now yeah, i'm just well, you know that's what he does he's still a puppy and are you are you still working full time oh yeah yeah I, I actually i'm parked right outside my work remember we talked about that remember i came up to the job and i was just like I don't know if you're still at that same company, but I was like, this location would be perfect for bus, bus like van life because it, it, it's private, you know what I mean? You can literally live in the parking lot on your days that you work when you're off, just, you know, roll out. Oh yeah, I love it. And oh my I, God, I, I, I am so, I am so happy you were able to do it. Ah. Y'all, she is sitting in my original rig. Tasha has taken my original rig and done the same thing with it. Hopefully, she's able to get it down to Florida one day soon. DG, do you have any questions for Tasha while she's on? So, how does that work? Like, because you said you're parked right outside of your work. How does that work for you? Like, do they uh, Well, I that you're parked out there? What do you do? Uh, I grow uh, uh, marijuana in Denver, Colorado. Oh, hold on. I need and to come visit. That's what I need yes, to do. <laughs> Not even joking. I have a guest bed. You come on through. I'm, I'll am i pick you up from the Girl, airport. I ride my bed. <laughs> I live in my SUV. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I'm down here in San Diego right now. Well, if you make it to Denver, like when you make it to Denver, hit me up. Uh, it'd be nice to, to hang out. I can make dinner. Uh, Absolutely. And she can cook, y'all. She can cook. And, and my, my job is you cook that saying something. She don't like nothing. Aww. <laughs> well, I don't. I would love to have both y'all over. It would be so much fun. And we're both y'all bring we're your ready. Gonna come. Yeah, we're definitely coming. You know I don't get there until about uh, April, May. And I don't know if you heard me say this, Tasha. I don't know if you were able to get on. But as of Friday... I will no longer be full-time employed. I am not going to work full-time for the rest of the year. So I can have a full-time nomadic experience all the way up into New Year. And then I'm going to reevaluate my situation as of the new year. That is Wonderful. my coming up. Congratulations. That so sounds like a fabulous time. You will be seeing me this I would, and, I would, I, and that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping to have one last Haru. What? Haru? Hurrah. 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 Hoorah. Oh, hoorah. Hoorah. What hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha looking like, what language is she trying to get it out in? I mean, <laughs> in whatever language, I'm, I'm sure it was fine. It just, I, I just translated it to English, that's all. Thank you so much. And Tasha, thank you so much. Stay on the line. There's still a lot more to come. And yeah, and actually, ladies, um, we've got a question, if you're ready for to answer another question. 
So on the YouTubes, we've got She's a Nomad. And she says, ladies, I'll be getting on the road soon. And one thing I expect to have is a little too much downtime outside of planned activities. How are you ladies coping with the new smaller space and boredom? Let me tell you something. And Tasha will be able to tell you this firsthand. And and Danette uh, having four years in. I've been doing this since like 2018. So I have four years in. So that's some perspective. I have four years. Danette has 100 days. How, how long have you been full time in the bus, Tasha? Huh? How long have you been full time in the bus? Uh, since... Uh, right before Christmas, so like uh, twelve twenty. So I guess what, like two months, month and a half, two months. So let me tell you about this perspective. You think you'll be bored? You won't be bored. There is always something to do, some yeah. remodeling, somewhere you want to uh, go, uh, something you want to research. Like you will always find yourself in the YouTube. You'll find yourself meeting people. I actually met Tasha uh, when I had first got to Colorado the very first time. So, and I didn't know anybody. I was at a flea market trying to get some fresh produce, just minding my business, trying to buy some onions. And you know, I'm from Philly, y'all. Y'all know I'm a city girl. I ain't know what them damn onions look like. Tasha was like, they got some onions right over there. And I was like, girl, I went over there. They ain't got no onions. Tasha's like, they couldn't have sold all them onions. I was like, girl, there was no onions over there. I did not know that onions had a whole stalk on them and was green, the little green stalk. And I did not know. So she walked me over there and showed me like, these are the onions. And I was like, oh, baby girl, I didn't know onions they had a green leafy stalk and all that. And she's like, yeah, and you can eat that part too. It's like a scallion on the top and an onion on the bottom. You get the best of both worlds when you buy fresh. Didn't know that's how I met Tasha. Met Tasha, we started hiking cooking, babysitting my dog, because hanging out. When you're on the road, the best thing I can tell you, don't have a plan. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to do this that day. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go. You have to go with the flow. Yeah. You have to find your tribe. You have to be open. And when I go to different towns, I always try to find local things to do. Uh, flea markets, farmers markets, um, local concerts, uh, find like meetup events. Uh, informational event just to find stuff to do and to meet people and you'll find your tribe you will definitely find your tribe but boredom is something I have never ever experienced I've never been bored there has always been something to do and I'll find myself in a town and I'm going to tell the story of how I met Jeanette I was stuck at the airport in Dallas for 12 hours I didn't think I was going to make it I was going to jump off the roof for 12 hours, I was stuck in Dallas at the airport. And I'm just, you know, going through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. And I see Danette, who I was following, because me and her were in a nomad group. And she said she was on her way to New Orleans. I hit her up immediately, like, you don't know me. I am a stranger. But however, let's link up. Let's link, right? And she, I'm like, I hope she responds. I hope she responds. And she did. She responded, went out on a limb. And... Me and her have been uh, friends ever since. Now we're business partners. We travel. We plan events. We do stuff like this. So no, you won't be bored. You won't. You won't be bored at all. Trust me, you won't. And you will find people, places, and things that you didn't even imagine. Did you have anything to add that you wanted to add to that, uh, Tasha? No, me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, uh, working on the bus, like, it's continuous, and, like, uh, if I do have downtime, it's, like, hit up the area, like, uh, check out the local hikes, um, there's usually, uh, art walks within the area, like, First Friday art walks, yeah, and, um, just seeing what is, uh, what the, the food of the area, because there's free stuff, and, like, with Denver, there's, uh, magazines like rooster and uh westward or west yeah westward and it tells you all types of uh free events dozens of yeah, days that's another thing i yeah that's another thing i failed to mention i always get the local free magazine or the local free newspaper oh tori has jumped on oh, hey so we've got akila on youtube 
joining us. So we have somebody, we're, uh, Tasha, we're live on YouTube and Instagram right now. Okay. So somebody just jumped on to our live on YouTube and her name is uh, Akila and she is a new um, band like. Thank you guys for staying tuned for this uh, extended amount of time. You know, I tend not to like my videos to go over 15 minutes. So this live actually went on for about an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. So you'll get this part today, which is Sunday, and you'll get the next part Wednesday. And I'll try to do uh, Sundays and Wednesdays for the live recaps. Uh, and again, thanks for staying uh, tuned. This will be a great time to like and subscribe. And don't forget to share with your friends.